things God has done. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. We want to just enter with this scripture of remembrance this morning as we come into this place in this sacred time of worship. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse 2 says, And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. If you obey the Lord your God. I'm excited about the word because I believe the blessings are coming upon us. The blessings are overtaking us. Even when there are challenges, I believe that it only signals to us that we are on track. Amen. You're on mission. You're on point. Amen. Amen. Because many times, though it is those frustrations, there are those frustrations and agitations and sometimes those turbulences uh, that cause us to uh, question, but I know I've written, I've flown enough times to know that just because I'm nervous, I'm a passenger. Yeah. The pilot knows what's going on. Yeah. The pilot has experienced it so many times. Yeah. The pilot is aware of what's what, of who's who, of yeah. how to get to where they need to get to. Yeah. And so I trust the pilot. I trust our God. Yeah. Amen. So with that, we celebrate. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor for what you have done and what you are going to do. We thank you that no weapon formed against us prospers. Every tongue that rises against us in judgment, we condemn, for this is the heritage of your servants and our righteousness is of you. Father, we thank you for this hour of power. We thank you for this time of celebration. We thank you that every need is met and we have more in store. We thank you that you are the God who supplies all of our need according to your riches and glory. We thank you this afternoon that you have done it and we will praise you forever. I will praise thee forever for thou has done it. We thank the Lord, we give him glory, we give him honor. Why? Because he sent his word, it healed us and delivered us. Thank you for your word, oh God. For your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We hide your word in our heart that we may not sin against you. In the name of the Lord we pray. We thank you for that and we glorify you for that. Not just today, but forevermore. Amen. Somebody say forever, forever. Hallelujah forever, for thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and forever. Amen and amen. I'm ready, I'm ready. Come on, let's just get our praise on. Amen. As Minister Carmen comes to meet us in praise and worship this afternoon. Amen. I'm excited about that. Amen. Uh, I just want you to keep that excitement going. Keep that excitement going. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. He is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. You are worthy. And we ask, hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Bless your name, oh God. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh God. Hallelujah. You can't stop this praise. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. We give you honor. Hallelujah.
open ourselves up to you today, God. We are open. We are willing vessels. And we ask that you fill us up, God. We know that as two or more are gathering, we, you are in the midst. Two or more are gathered together that you are here, God. So we ask that you just fill us up and sing along with me. If you will provide fire.
Hallelujah. We thank you for answered prayers. We thank you for the touches. Hallelujah. The hearts that you are touching today. The minds that you are renewing today. Hallelujah. We praise you because we know that it is done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ask that you fill us up because we need more of you each day. Hallelujah. I need more of you today than I needed yesterday. So I ask that you fill me up, God.
what he's done for me. That's what he's done. Just tell somebody he's done so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has been so good to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We used to add to it and say he's been my mother and my father. Hallelujah. And I won't take it back. He has been so good to me. Hallelujah. Therefore, I get joy when I think about what the Lord has done for me. Hallelujah. We give God praise. Hallelujah. I'm excited about what the Lord has done. I'm excited about what the Lord has done. Amen. We're going to bless the Lord right here in this spirit of excitement and energy and all of the blessings that are flowing just spiritually. We're going to bless the Lord in our giving this afternoon. Hallelujah. Father, we know that we have a financial plan called tithe and offering. At this moment, we set our heart to tap into your financial plan for us. The enemy will not rob us anymore in our finances. In the name of Jesus, by faith, we are at this moment planting our financial seed into your field. We are doing it because we know that it is a biblical truth that in return for our financial faithfulness, you supply all of our need and provide above our need. Amen. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. Come on, all over this building. If you are watching us, uh, those that are joining us by virtual means, if you want to share your gifts, our cash app is Dollar Sign Thinking Church. Dollar Sign Thinking Church is our cash app. So if you are joining us virtually on Facebook Live or on Zoom and you want to share, you may do it by cash app. Uh, and we're so grateful. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and we bless when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. The devil is defeated and we are blessed. Somebody say we are blessed. How many people you know you're blessed? You're blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you for your liberal giving. Repeat after me. I have given. Therefore I receive. I have given cheerfully, therefore I receive cheerfully. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall it be given to me cheerfully, says the word of God. How many people believe in seed time and harvest? Yes, yes. Right there while we're experiencing the blessing that that was our text for the morning, our scripture for the morning. And we want to just continue that as we get ready for the word of, the God, of God. Somebody say, I'm ready for the word. I'm ready for the word. I'm ready for the word. 
In the word of the Lord, Deuteronomy 28, once again in your hearing, starting at verse 1. Amen. We're excited about the word of God. This is our time, and we know already no weapon formed against us prospers. And every tongue that rises against us in judgment, we will condemn, for this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and our righteousness is of God. Deuteronomy 28 says in verse 1, uh, if you will only obey the Lord, your God, by diligently observing all his commandments that I am commanding you today, the Lord, your God, will set you on high above all nations, above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come up on you and overtake you. Verse 3, blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your livestock. Both the increase of your cattle and the issue of your livestock. Blessed shall be your basket. Blessed shall be your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven. The Lord will command the blessing upon you in your bonds and in all that you undertake. He will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. The Lord will make you abound in prosperity, in the fruit of your womb in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your ground, in the land that the Lord swore to you, your ancestors, ancestors to give you. The Lord will open for you his rich storehouse, the heavens to give rain, and your land in its season. And to bless all your undertakings, you will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. The Lord will make your head, make you the head and not the tail. You shall be uh, only on top and not at the bottom. If you obey the commandment of the Lord your God, which I am commanding you today by diligently observing to do, by diligently observing to do them. And if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I am commanding you today, either to the right or to the left, follow, following other gods to serve them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. My prayer is speak, Lord, for your children are listening. Speak, Lord, for your children are listening. As uh, Many of you do. I'm not going to act like I'm by myself. Uh, many of you have those wonderful subscriptions to the thing called Netflix. <laughs> I know I got your attention already. And, and on Netflix, there is a series. I will not name the series. Uh, I won't name the series, but there is a series. And within that series, the new season came out. And the first one I watched, now yeah, this is going to just mean something, uh, especially to those of you that know this series. So when I talk about it, you're going to kind of know. But it doesn't matter if you haven't seen it or not. What happened in this first, uh, this episode of this first series is this young lady who was a business executive. Uh, was doing business and in her corporation and certain things begin to happen. They begin to happen and... Uh, basically what happened was this lady was fired. The lady was fired from her job and other somebody else uh, was put in the position. 
On her way out, she was going out peacefully, but not without a few uh, 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 upsetting words on her way to the parking lot. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, she wasn't happy about being fired. She wasn't happy about being let go. So she was let go and she went home and all of her life uh, she began to uh, live her life in such a way that she was just really bitter and angry. And one thing began to happen that caught her attention and that was she turned on the TV. And when she turned on the TV it looked awfully familiar. It looked familiar because what had happened was everything about her life was unfolding 20 to 30 minutes after she did it, it would show up on television. And the world was literally watching her life as it unfolded. 20 minutes later, her life would be on television. They had hired somebody to play her. Somewhere there were cameras, let's call it Big Brother, was watching wherever she went, whatever she did. And 20 minutes later, the actors that were playing her life would play out exactly what she did. I don't know about you, but some of y'all would agree with me as you thank God that God didn't let that be the case with your life played out on the screen of everybody else's and everybody saw and people, even when she laid her own, people knew what was going on. It was spreading like wildfire. She would try to go to her friend's house and, and, and say, let me just run in here. And they'd be like, no, you ain't coming in here uh, because that means I'm going to be on TV next. Uh, why? Because as she began to scream and holler and got angry because this particular network uh, was similar, looked like Netflix, but it wasn't Netflix. It looked like a Netflix, but 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 what it was, she went to the network and said, look, what are y'all doing? Why are y'all, uh, uh, who's following my life and why are they following my life like this? And they said, you don't know why? She said, no. She, they said, because you did not read when you could uh, agree to the terms and conditions. They say, you agree to the terms and conditions. She was like, what? She was like, I want to fix that. They said, I'm sorry. You can't fix it. There ain't nothing you can do. She went to her attorneys. Nobody could fix it because she had already agreed to the terms and conditions. That brings me to my subject today. And that is the fact I want to talk about blessings, terms, and conditions. Blessings, terms, and conditions. Somebody said just a few days ago, they said it's amazing how we forget that this book full of blessings. This book is packed full of blessings. Matter of fact, I looked it up several times to try to figure out how many times it's blessings mentioned. And literally the word blessing is mentioned almost 80 times or more in scripture. And referencing, references to blessings are mentioned any, even more times. References to blessings, uh, blessings are mentioned many times throughout scripture. But it's, it's interesting to understand that most of us, we know the blessings. But not many of us have read the terms and conditions. Oh, let me help somebody just for a few minutes. Give me about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, uh, to terms and conditions. I heard somebody say it like this. Uh, uh, many of us Christian folks and everybody else all around the world lie all day long because we are so busy clicking. Uh, uh, I have read and agree to the terms and conditions. And the truth is, many, many times we have not read the terms and conditions. We've only read the blessing. We've only read the benefit and the terms and conditions go what? Unread. And what we do, we pick up, we pick up even this book and we check read the terms and conditions. But the truth is, most of us have only read, we're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast that. We, we got that down pat. But many people don't know verse 1 of that where Fred Hammond got that song from. Verse 1 says, if you will only obey. Woo! 
Let me just work for a few minutes. If you will only obey, it amazes me. And I know I'm going to have to run. I'm glad we're going out of town, uh, my wife and I, after this. We're going to run because we're going to have to run after this message because the church is packed full of folks that know the blessings. But the church is depleted of folks who know the terms and conditions. If I ask folks, uh, they can tell me I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come and when I go. If I ask them, well, what qualifies that blessing? Most folks would say, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? Because they don't know that with those blessings comes attached terms and conditions. Terms and conditions all through scripture. There are literal terms and conditions. Oh, I'm just going to work around this a little bit. Let me just tell you, let me just take you even to your home. I'm convinced that many of us would have much better lives if we had terms and conditions attached to our lives. Let me just let that sink in right now. Some of us, we got in some crazy situations because we didn't have established in our lives some terms and conditions. Some of us got into relationships with some crazy folks because we didn't let them know that we had terms and conditions. Some of us have been too busy spending our lives just giving away blessings with no terms and no conditions. So folks really been walking through our lives scot-free because we didn't bother to put up any terms and conditions. Oh, just marry me without any terms or conditions. Oh, oh just be, uh, uh, have my car without any terms and conditions. Oh, I grew up, see, I grew up in a time where we had, I, and this is a society and a day where a lot of folks, especially our children, are not raised with any what? Terms or conditions. What does that mean? That means they just get to do whatever they want to do, right? Because they don't have, we don't give them terms and conditions. I'm telling you, I told you before and I tell you again, children will get up in age and they will literally have issues with you as a parent because they will come back and say, why didn't you give me terms and conditions? Why did you just let me run roughshod as if there were no consequences? And then when they go through life and run into the brick wall, then they come to find out in life there are terms and conditions. You just can't do whatever you want to do and say whatever you want to say and think there are no terms and conditions. Somebody said there are terms and conditions. We got to understand there are terms and conditions to this life. There are terms and conditions, and the quicker we establish them, the better off our lives are going to be. Or oh, I grew up where uh, I remember uh, hearing the story about my, my grandmother, uh, was, uh, and, and she was having some ice cream one day, and she was uh, uh, licking the ice cream cone. And my mom told the story uh, about her mother, and, and she had this ice cream cone. And, and she looked at she said, that ice cream cone looks so good. She said, Mama, can I have some of your ice cream? And she looked at it and said, Baby, I'm sorry, this is my ice cream. Some of us, and, and some of y'all don't like that because you want your, your babies and your grandbabies, they got access to everything and anything. No, you don't get access to everything. And then some things, this is mine. And our children need to learn lessons like that. Why? Because they ain't going to get everything they want just because you cute. Come on, somebody. Uh, we... Until you tell our children, you tell them all the time, just because you cute don't mean you get to act ugly. Come on, somebody. <laughs> just because you cute don't mean you get to act ugly. Come on, somebody. And nothing more ugly than cute people acting ugly. Oh, I'm almost done. Ain't, ain't nothing more ugly than you got cute folks acting ugly. And, and you look at them and say, they're so pretty, but they're so ugly. I'm just tore, I'm just tore up because I can't believe somebody so pretty can act so ugly. There's nothing more ugly than somebody cute 
acting ugly. But that's because they grew up with no terms and conditions. See, I grew up in time, and many of us grew up in times in the shame we let our children grow up without those. We call them terms and conditions, but in life and relationship, it's called boundaries. Well, I, had to, uh, I remember in one of my therapy sessions, counseling sessions, uh, the lady said, so the lady said, well, what you need to learn is you need to understand the, that you need boundaries. Oh, and that woke me up for the rest of my life. She said, what's happening to you is that you are not establishing boundaries. Matter of fact, she made the book Boundaries, the assignment. She said, by the time you come back, the next time you need to have read the book or at least started the book, what? Boundaries. Because so many times we don't give people boundaries. That's what terms and conditions establish. It establishes Boundaries. Somebody say boundaries. Some people, so many people think that just because we're under grace, we have no boundaries. Let me just, I told you, I'm just skipping around a little bit. Just because we're under the dispensation of grace does not justify doing whatever you want to do. Just because you've grown enough to do it and think God is going to always smile on us. The truth is there is coming a reckoning day. And the, the thing is that I don't want to be the preacher that didn't tell my church that yes, there are some boundaries. No, you can't do whatever you want to do and think that you just going to get away with it. Sure, it may look like you're getting away with it for a while, but at some point, the Bible says we've got to give an account for every deed done in this life. I didn't say it. God said it. You know, get mad, get mad with God. I, I'm worried about it when I know it's something God said and not something I made up. Why? Because in this life, we're going to have to give an account for every deed. Somebody say every deed. Oh, I'm glad I learned that as a child in church. I'm glad uh, they didn't mind preaching. Uh, I know it's an old fogey. I know it's an old, but I'm glad I grew up where they preach sin. They preach that we couldn't do whatever we wanted to do. Yes, some of it was to the extreme, but God knows I'd rather have the extreme than no boundaries at all and look up and stand before an angry God. One thing I don't want to do is get up to doing all of this all my life, preaching and singing and testifying and playing the instruments and traveling and doing all I can and then stand before God and he says those famous words that not too many people know what they are and that are, that is, depart from me. You workers of iniquity, I never knew you. All of us know well done, thy good and faithful servant, but don't allow I said terms and conditions. I just let that sit right there with that microphone. Just. Somebody said terms and conditions. Just the same word that says, well done, thy good and faithful servant, also says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Yeah, Jesus, uh, the word of God lets us to know, and in that day, there are going to be many that said, I did this in your name. I did that. I, did, I preached in your name. I did praise and worship. I played the drums. I played the keyboard in your name. And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Because, yeah, you did it. But you did it knowing all of the iniquity that was going on. Somebody said, you got to know, you got to know the terms and conditions. So what I refuse to do is let folks sit up in the house of God as if there are no terms and conditions. Tell me how to say there's some terms and conditions. When I think about it, even from the beginning, even in Genesis, there are terms and conditions. Genesis chapter 1 and 26, I believe, somewhere around that, God says to, them, to Adam and Eve, he says, and he blessed them. And he blessed them. But then later on he said, but of the tree of good and evil, you are not to eat. In other words, the, the, these are the terms and I'm giving you everything. But this is the term and this is the condition of the tree in the middle of the garden of good and of evil. You are not to eat because if you eat, 
is the term and hair condition. If you eat of that tree the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Oh, we didn't think that was in the scripture, did you? Oh, we, we forgot that was in there. Somebody said terms and conditions. Do you not know? We are in the state we are in today in life because sin is running rock shot throughout our land. Why? Because they in the garden abuse the terms and conditions. Adam and Eve abused the terms and conditions. What did they do? They ate up the tree that God said not to eat. Ain't no way you can do what God said not to do and think it's going to go well with you. And I know some of you see even grace, uh, even grace was there because did they physically die? No, they did not physically die, but it was separation from God. Woo. Somebody say separated. Let me work my way on up. I'm coming on up to the New Testament. Uh, we go to Malachi. Most of us like to quote it. We just quoted some of it doing offering where we like to say, and God will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out what? A blessing that we won't have what? Room enough to receive. Somebody say blessing. Oh, we love the blessing. I love the blessing. Blessings are good. He said, he said, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and I will pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. But before that, what did he tell them? He said, you have robbed me. My God, my God. Ooh, 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 we forgot about that part. We, we just jumped. We just jumped straight to the blessing and we forgot that, that he said, look, he said, you robbed me uh, uh, in Malachi chapter three. He says, you robbed me. He said, uh, verse eight, will a man rob God? He says, yet you have robbed me. He said, but how do we rob you? He said, in time and in offerings. Yes, yes, yes. My God, my God. Verse 10 is where we like to jump to. Bring ye all the tithe, the full of the tithe, into the storehouse, that there may be food in mine house. And prove me now with bread, the Lord of hosts, will I not open up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive. We like that, and I like it too. He's going to pour out the blessing. He's going to open up the windows and pour down for you overflowing blessings. Verse 11, I will rebuke the devourer and the locust for you, so that I will not destroy the produce of your so, yes, all of that's true if you bring the tithe into the storehouse. Somebody say, keep going, Bishop. Keep going. Keep going. If you, you jump to the New Testament, you say, well, that sounds good, but you've been all in the Old Testament. Let me just jump to Matthew. Matthew 6 gives us ways to understand the blessing. Somebody say the blessing. If we look at Matthew 6, Matthew 6 begins to tell us about the blessing. One of the things we see in Matthew, we see the Beatitudes. Somebody say the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes tells us what happens when we are blessed. Somebody say we're blessed. He says, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed for they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. Isn't it a matter? Isn't it amazing that a lot of us want to be filled but a lot of us don't want to hunger and thirst. We don't have a hunger and we don't have a thirst yet we want to be filled. He says, he that hunger and thirst after righteousness, what? Shall be filled. Somebody say, shall be filled. Oh yeah, that's what it says. It says, they shall be filled because they hunger and thirst after righteousness. That's chapter 5 and verse 1. When Jesus saw the crowd, verse 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. We all want mercy, but are we being merciful? Somebody said, in terms and conditions, for mercy is that you are merciful. The terms and conditions for mercy is be merciful. The terms and conditions for being filled is a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Who's going to see God? The pure in heart. Somebody say terms and conditions. Matthew 6, Jesus is still talking, giving us terms and conditions concerning prayer. He says, and whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. 
I used to say, all we need to do is just teach Jesus the teachings of Jesus and we'll be all right until I start really digging into the teachings of Jesus, Jessica. And I realized the teachings of Jesus can be pretty strong. He said, don't be like the hypocrites when you pray for they think they stand and pray in the synagogues and in the street corners so they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they receive their reward already. Somebody say terms and conditions. Jesus said, here's some terms. Don't be like them. I'm going to tell you exactly who they are and what they do. Don't be like them. These are the terms and conditions. Jesus says, but when you pray, do not hip peep up empty praises and praises uh, as the Gentiles. Don't do like them. Uh, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them for your father knows what you have need before you ask. Somebody said terms and conditions. So terms and conditions are all through scripture. Let me just end with this last uh, uh, section. Let me just go to Romans because most of us know Romans. Most of us know Romans. Uh, uh, even though uh, I was going to just remind us of one of the other things that Jesus said. And, and many times we wonder why we can't get what we read, what we need, and what we want. And that's because Jesus said, you got one thing that you miss. Only believe. We're talking, but are we believing? Talking and believing is two different things. Somebody said talking and believing are two different things. So many times we're talking about it, but do we really believe what it is we're saying? What it is we're saying. Uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10, most of us know it. Most of us know it by heart. How, why? Because we quote it and we share it. We give it to folks that we're trying to lead to Christ. Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says what? When we look at verse 10, it says, for, uh, for one of the things we understand about this, Romans 10, uh, verse 9, it says, because if you confess with your mouth, and believe in your heart, the Lord. Somebody say, you got to confess and believe. If you confess, that this version says, the, the New Revised Standard, if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. More terms and conditions. For one believes with the heart so that he is justified and one confesses with the mouth so that he, uh, so that that one is saved. I love verse 13. It says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Y'all know I quote that one a lot. I love it. But I, I, I don't want to leave you stranded with that. I want to leave you with also verse 14. Uh, because we know for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But here's the issue, the problem, the term, the condition. Verse 14. But how? Are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? You can't call on God if you ain't never believed God. If you don't believe God, don't think we can just call on God. You got to believe. Somebody said, and how shall they call on the one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in the one in whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to preach? The, in a, the King James Version say, how shall they hear without a preacher? The New Revised said, how without someone to proclaim to them? And how are they to proclaim him unless? Yes, they are sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Somebody say, I love God for God's terms and conditions. See, this is this is this is this is what a real believer is about. You don't get excited. I know some folks couldn't get excited uh, uh, about the terms and conditions because I wasn't talking about blessings. Uh, but true believers, true Christians, true people who have love, who love the Lord, we don't have a problem giving God praise for terms and conditions. Yes. That's it. We don't have a problem praising God for terms and conditions. Why? Because, like I said, if you've been, I uh, heard, I believe it was Bishop Kevin Harris, uh, when folks were, uh, he was asking folks to do something in church and, and trying to give them some instruction, and, and folks were just looking. He said, I understand. He said, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't surprise me that folks can't, can't, can't do what they're being asked because most folks just ain't been, don't have no home training. 
See, folks that got some home training know how to praise God uh, uh, because with terms and conditions. Why? Because when you do that, we know that God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches of glory. Somebody say, I got terms and conditions. We don't have a problem praising God because we know that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask a thing because my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. Why? Because we've been trained, we've been trained right. Somebody tell somebody I got some good home training. Oh, I'm glad my, my dad disciplined me and my mother disciplined me because God says those he loves, he chastens. That's why we can give God praise even when I give God praise when God is whipping my behind because I know if God is whipping my behind, God still loves me. I know if God pricks my heart, I give him praise because he still loves me. I give him glory because he still loves me. I give him honor because he still loves me. He chases me because he loves me. He chastises me because he loves me. And whenever God gets on my case, Because the blessing is in the terms and the condition. There's a blessing in the term and condition. Come on, give God praise. Thank you for the terms and condition. Hallelujah. Come on, just give God some praise. Thank God that He chased you. Thank God that he chastised him. Thank God that he brought a word to convict us. It's conviction that got me where I am. Thank God that my heart was quick. Thank God that my mind was troubled. Thank God because it's God that troubled my spirit that made me run down to the altar one night to when my heart wasn't right and something got a hold God loves me just that much. God loves me just that much. He said, I ain't going to let you act the fool. Woo! My wife, she got a habit of telling, telling me, we used to tell each other and tell our children, so don't be nowhere acting like a money, monkey because somebody going to know you. <laughs> what that means, we establish some terms and conditions. Don't be out nowhere acting like a monkey. Because folks know you. I tell my children, folks know me. They, they associate you with me, so don't be nowhere acting like a monkey. Somebody said terms and conditions. I love God because God gave us terms and conditions. Some people can praise him just because of the blessing. But it's a, it's a real believer that can praise God for the terms and conditions. Woo! These terms and conditions have kept me safe. The terms and conditions have kept me safe. Old preacher said, I remember him saying these commandments. I know we, we, we despise them, but, but God knew what God was doing. God was trying to keep us safe. Some of the stuff you commit, some of them commandments, you ain't, you got, you are heaping up fire on your chest. And some of us have known because we have abused, we have broken them, and we know the results. And we say, God, I know. I thank you now because I know better. Because your word, you tried to warn me. Somebody said, God tried to warn me. God tried to warn me. Come on, organist, I can't hear you. God tried to warn me. God tried to warn me. Yes. I'm glad God blocked it. Kirk God said, God blocked it. I mean, yeah. Kirk said, he wouldn't let it be so. God blocked it. I thank God for terms. 
I thank God I can praise him for terms. Woo! Some of my hardest dancing has been after I realized God, God the terms, God preached and picked, pricked my heart so that Oh, my heart was bleeding. My eyes were running by uh, salty tears. But I began to praise God because I knew God loved me. Yes. I knew he wasn't doing it because he was mad at me. God was doing it because he was madly in love with me. Yes. Israel said, I'm not doing it. He's not doing it because he's mad at me. He's doing it because he's madly in love with me. Yes. Somebody said, he's madly in love with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a horrible parent who does not give their children terms and conditions. And it would be a horrible God who would only give us blessings without boundaries. Oh, that might be the next part of this message. Blessings without boundaries. That's a scary thing. Some people think it's blessings, but blessings without boundaries are not blessings at all. Because God has always surrounded God's blessings with boundaries. God has always surrounded God's blessings with boundaries. Yeah, you can have it if. Yes, you can have it, but. One scripture I was re reading this morning, I don't have my, it, it in front of me, but it said, goes on to say, however, I thank God for the places in my life. God said, yes, but however, tell my students, when you see those conjunctions like but, like if, like however, you need to pay attention. Don't just go running off with the buts. Don't go running off with the blessings without knowing the terms and conditions. Because sometimes you run off thinking, oh, I got a blessing. And you really got a problem. Because you didn't have the terms and conditions. So many times, even in Genesis, God said, but if you do this, this is what's going to happen to you. Parents have told us. They say, you can do it. But if you do it, this is what gonna happen. Because I don't want you to act like I didn't warn you. I don't want you to act like I didn't tell you. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you the terms and conditions up front. Come on, somebody. That's my almost 40 year old child. Still praising God because he know. And I'm the same way with my mama. Because I know. Because they put terms and conditions. They established. Now what I realized, uh, Carmen, is what that was, was really establishing the principle of God in our lives. Because God is the same way. So when we do that, we are really establishing the principles of God in the lives of God's, of our children, which are God's children. So I thank God for the blessings. But even more, I thank God for the terms and for the conditions. I thank God that we're just not clicking, checking the box, read and accept the terms and conditions. But no, give, give me the terms. Let me make sure I know before I accept this blessing. Let me make sure I know the terms. <laughs> My God, make sure I know the terms and conditions. I do like our lawyer told us you purchase homes and those of you that purchase homes before when they go through all that paperwork <laughs> you're shaking your head already they go through all that paperwork and I say, they say Man, this packet is the terms and conditions I'm just give you an overview of it but this is usually what they say they said but 
when you get home and when you're having an insomnia night and you can't sleep, open this up. Because there's so much to read. You might want to use this when you can't sleep. Because this will help. Why? Because they want you to know that in here are the terms and conditions. So many of us have purchased, have accepted, have received and didn't realize after we got it, I wish I had read the terms and conditions. Why am I preaching like this? Because I don't want the thinking church. Why am I preaching this like this as a pastor? Because I don't want this church, the thinking church. Why am I preaching like this as a bishop? Because I don't want our fellowship, Global Harvest Fellowship, to say I wish my pastor I wish my bishop had preached also the terms and condition. He blessed us with the cake and with the cookies and with the candy and with the, but I wish he had given us some collins. I wish some of them Sundays he had just made a good green smoothie. I wish he had given us something that that would go and stick with us. I wish, and I don't want it to be that case because the Bible says, after I read Romans 13, 14, it says, ultimately, when you have that preacher, it says, how beautiful are the, those who carry the gospel of peace. Because the truth is, the terms and conditions brings us to peace. They really bring us to peace. Terms and conditions bring us to peace. They don't bring us to pain. I've noticed that not having boundaries, not having, <laughs> you preaching for me, you preaching harder than me, not having boundaries, not having terms and conditions, brought pain in my life. I remember saying, I wish somebody had told me. Everybody just went along with me. I wish somebody had a said, but hey, you, you might need to think about this. Glad we had some deacons in our church. Like overseer Albert Brown, he was a deacon then. They wouldn't mind pulling me aside and said, hey, 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 hey. I'm about to tear up. Because somebody had enough boldness to say, hey, 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 hey. Hey. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Don't do that. Don't do that. If you do that, you're going to regret it. I, I know you, I know you old enough, but, but we call it today, if you don't know what that, they call it checking you. I wish somebody had checked me. I don't want our congregation, our fellowship to say, I wish my pastor, my bishop had checked me. You say, well, that sounds good, but what did it sound like when you were growing up in church? Ultimately, and I say this all the time, it sounded like, search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Turn the light of heaven on my soul. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out. Straighten me, because I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. Don't be letting me out. Making a monkey, a mockery, a fool of myself. Check me, oh God. Lady sings the song, Save me, O oh God, I want to be more like you. Change me, O oh God. Change me through and through. Why? Because I want to be like God. I want to be more like Jesus. Father, I thank you. You sent your word, it healed us and delivered us. Father, I thank you, God. I thank you for your blessings 
that you allowed us to know that they come with terms and conditions. Thank you, Father, that you remind us. You remind us that it's because you care about us. It is because of your love and of your kindness that you give us terms and conditions. You present boundaries to keep us safe. Thank you, Father, for the physical guard rails in our physical life. But come, Father, I thank you for the God rails in our spiritual lives. The rails, the God rails that kept us from going over the cliff of our lives. The God rails that protected us even though we ran into them and sometimes damaged our cars, but it ultimately saved oh my God. It saved our lives. For the God rails that guarded us, kept us from destroying ourselves. Thank you. And as the old folks say, when we were in our sin, you didn't turn us over to a reprobated mind. Thank you, God, that you kept pricking, pricking us, tugging at the heart. You kept pulling. Hot strings. You kept chastening us. Thank you, God, for the discipline. Thank you, God. Because it just let us know that you really loved us. You didn't want to see us perish. You were trying to save our lives. And Father, we know today that it wasn't just for us, but it was for our children. Even as Reverend Lady was speaking this morning. It wasn't just the prayers on the side of the bed that were just for us, but it was for our children, and it was for our children's children. It was the prayer God wills that we are living in today. We are alive today because somebody prayed for us, had us on their mind. Thank you, Father that we will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, give God praise. Come on, give God praise.